choir comes in, I want to welcome each of you, and we'll do our welcome later on, but uh, in the service too, but it's great to see you in God's house. I can't think of a better place to start 2014, can you? Let me read a couple things here. It says, thank you from the bottom of my heart and soul for the many prayers, calls, cards, and acts of kindness during the time of sorrow from the passion of my beloved father. You have been and will continue to be my strength. Uh, with much love, Cheryl Hickman. We certainly want to keep Cheryl and her family in, in our prayers, okay? Or is that Sherry? Sherry, that's right. I ought to know that name, hadn't I? Sherry, she's got an E on hers, Sherry Hickman. So keep that family in your prayers. Also, I've been asked to announce that uh, uh, Awana Leaders Meetings move to next Sunday uh, at 4 o'clock, okay, next Sunday, because we're going to have a church council meeting today, and we're not going to be very long. We'll be quick, but we need all you leaders to show up for that because it will be an important meeting. We've got some great things planned for 2014. And one thing I want to encourage you to do as the choir makes their way in is get in Sunday school. You know, I've I walked through here, and I've just become familiar with our educational facilities. Do you know we got three or four rooms empty? And you know what? Some of the most serious rooms I know are empty in this church. Four, is it four and five? Four and fifth, is it four and five? No, four and fifth grade? Second, third. Second, third. We got to get some kids in that class. Amen? So I want to encourage you to get out and invite others. Well, let me encourage you with this. Our Lottie Moon Christmas offering, as of right now, is $3,207.43. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. That's a good offer. So guess what? We'll just keep giving till we can give all we can, all right? So someone said, when are we going to get that woman paid off? Well, we want to continue to spread the gospel. All right, y'all ready to worship? Are y'all ready to worship? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to go. I'm excited, aren't y'all? I'm looking forward to what God's going to do this year. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity we have to assemble together. Lord, to come into your house to worship this day. We thank you for answered prayer. We thank you, God, for your grace upon our lives. So, Lord, help us to be obedient to your spirit this day as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a hymn. Let's turn to hymn number 547. Number 547. Let's stand as we sing the first, second, and last verse. <laughs> Thank you. 
around, we want to recognize those of you who are our guests. You're fine, Carolyn. You're, you're not bothering me a bit. You can keep playing. But uh, it's important that we have a record of uh, you being with us today because we want to follow up and give you some material. So if you're our guest today, if you'll hold your hand up just for a second, our ushers will see your hand and give you a card. We've got several, so guys, hurry, hurry, hurry. All right. Thank you. There's one there, one there, one here. All right. They don't have the eyes like I have. Okay. All right. So fill that out if you would. And the offering, when it's taken up, we just ask that you put your put that in there if you would. Okay? Put it in the offering plate. That's your offering today. Okay? Fill out that card. And let me see. if I know we're starting out this new year. Anybody going to have a birthday this year? I guess so. But uh, what about anyone who's celebrating a birthday? I'm picking on you. Anybody celebrating a birthday? Y'all want to come on up? Who? Who is? Little girl. Where's she at? Come on. Come on. Who, who's having a birthday? Anybody having an anniversary? Come one, come all. There you go. How old are you? Ten. All right. I used to be ten. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. You're going to lead us on that, brother. And then we'll hear from you. Let's sing happy birthday to her. stand as we sing every day with Jesus and let's welcome everyone to the Lord's house today. Please take your hymnal and turn to hymn number 210. Number 210, this will be our offertory hymn. Number 210, let's stand and sing the first, second, and last verse of number 210. This will be our offertory hymn.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your bountiful grace upon our lives. And, Lord, the provisions of all that we have. And help us as your people to give you your kingdom's work. That true that the gospel might be shared. Bless now the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. She was with her as Christmas. She's going to sing special this morning. I have to share something with you before I begin this morning. I had another song picked out, but I think the Holy Spirit had something else in store for me this morning because He spoke to me all last night and I battled. <laughs> and God said, no, you're not singing that song this morning. I have another song for you to sing. And he said that there's somebody out here that needs to hear this song this morning. And um, this was my grandma's song. This was the first song I ever sang in church. And it's hard because I think about her all the time. But um, I know that she's in heaven and she's waiting for me. <clears throat> my Sunday school when I was only eight. Every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I will say yeah. thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave.
living to the Lord. I am the life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Then another man stood before you he said remember the times missionaries came to your church his pictures made you cry you didn't have much money but you gave it anyway Jesus took the gift you gave and that's why I'm in heaven today I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry but I was sure there were tears in your eyes As Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord he said my child look around you great is your reward thank you for giving to the Lord thank you brother Ron I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so Aren't you glad that someone was willing to give and, and give and give until lives were changed? I'm a squeaking and a squealing and a... Thank you, brother. God bless you for being here today. Are y'all excited about this new year? Man, I love new beginnings, don't you? A new year, a new opportunity. And thank God that we serve a God who never changes, but all of us need to be changed. Amen? Amen. Rich, you're here today. Amen. You know, someone asked me, said, Preacher, why don't you sit up here on the platform? Well, I've been a pastor for many, many years. Let me tell you a pastor's heart. You sit up here and you can get discouraged sometimes because you're looking out and you're thinking, well, so-and-so's not here today and so-and-so should be here. Here's the number one reason I don't sit up here. A lot of people say, I will see you Sunday morning. And you're sitting over here and you're saying, liar, liar, your pants on fire. <laughs> I don't want to sit here and think of anybody lying or I want to worship the Lord just like you do. Amen? Now that I've answered that, that's out of the way. All right. Now, the thing I encourage you to do when I became your pastor is bring your B-I-B-L-E. So bring your Bible. How many of you got your Bible? Hold it up. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to hold you accountable. Now I want you to bring a notepad. I promised you. I see that. I see that one notepad. I see that one. I see, how many of you got your notepad? Wow. Well, thank God. for what, you, you lifted up a bulletin, Sherry. Can you believe that? She lifted up a bulletin. That's going to be your notepad. She's got her pen. D. All right. <clears throat> I'm learning y'all's names. We had an evangelist years ago, Pat Perry. And the first night, I'm telling you this is the truth, and we had a large church. He'd go around and meet everybody and remember everyone's name 
And when he was preaching, he'd say, now Sherry, this is what God says, D, this is what God, and he, you better be paying attention because he's going to call your name. Maybe I'll try that on y'all, I don't know. But anyway, take your Bibles this morning and turn to Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. The title of the message is The Triumph of Faith. The Triumph of Faith. While you're finding your place in God's Word, Joshua chapter 5. I'm going to tell you how God... Uh, spoke to my heart about this message. The triumph of faith, Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. So many Christians are defeated. So many Christians are discouraged. And so many Christians are so careful today to be politically correct. We don't want to offend anyone. We don't want to hurt no one's feelings. While the world is unashamed of the gospel of the devil. Now did you know he's got an agenda? Do you know he knows his days are numbered and he's working overtime in these last days? And yet we are silent. We we don't want to upset anybody. Fear has overcome the church. But I'm here to preach today that there is an answer to victory. And the Bible teaches it very clearly. And that's what this message is about. The triumph of faith. Did you know the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God? Do you know what faith is? The writer of Hebrews says the substance of things hoped for and yet the things not seen. I'm telling you something. Just because you can't see it don't mean that it's not right here. I mean, God's here today. You may not see all that God. It'd probably surprise you to see some angels sitting up here on these front pews today. You say, preacher, I don't believe in that. Well, I do. Angels of the Lord account about them that fear him. I believe God's everywhere, don't you? And so I want us to stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. You've got your place, Joshua chapter 5. Pay attention closely as we read this scripture this morning. Joshua 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thy for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I come. I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thy standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Father, we stand on holy ground today. I pray for your fresh oil of anointing. Lord, as I've already poured my heart out to you, I know I am weak and undone. Lord, I know that I must, absolutely must be totally dependent upon you. So God, while I am weak, I'm going to ask you to be strong. And Lord, why I am so limited in my mind, Lord, I'm praying for an unlimited word here today. Lord, I'm praying for for you to take my finite words and turn them into infinite words. That God, you'll speak to hearts and change lives today. And if there's someone that don't know your Savior here today, I pray they'll be saved. Whether there'll be a church member that's unsaved or uh, someone who's been baptized and yet they've not been saved, God saves souls today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. There's something to be said about this book, Joshua. And I don't know how much you know about the Bible, but, you know, a lot of times, and when it especially comes to uh, a familiar subject is faith, look up here. We think we've got it figured out. We think we already understand it. And a lot of times it's a matter of interpretation, isn't it? You really need to understand how to interpret Scripture. I heard about this woman. Her, she was uh, made a widow. Her, her husband just died, and, and uh, they never had much money. In fact, they were very poor people, and, and uh, they wondered what kind of funeral they would give him. And, and uh, what they didn't know, this man had been paying barrel insurance. So he really wanted an up-to-do nice funeral. And so his wife gave him a very nice funeral, and everything went well. Well, after a few weeks uh, following his death, the ladies of the church began to take note of this widow's diamond ring. They said, wow, wonder where she got that. And this was the talk in the Sunday school class. Have you ever seen such a big rock? 
I mean, that is some stone she's got. You know, they never did have much money. I wonder if there's another man. Has someone given her a diamond or what's going on here? And so the ladies got together in the church and they said, why don't we appoint someone to go and talk to her and find out? We need to know where does she get it. It looks to be about three carats. Major money. So sure enough, one of the ladies went over and talked to the lady and said, Sister, we just want to ask you, you're one of our sisters in the Lord, where did you get that big rock? It looks to be three carats. She said, it is three carats. And I'm telling you something, my husband gave it to me. I said, well, how in the world did your husband give it to you? I said, well, I followed his instructions. In, in his plan for being buried, the funeral service and all, I did everything he said. In the last part, it said, purchase a nice memorial stone. And that's what I did. I took the remaining of his money and I bought me a $10,000 diamond ring. And I will remember my loving husband for as long as I live with this beautiful diamond. It, you, you do need to get your interpretation right, don't you? You better make sure. I think he had something else in mind for himself, but she was a smart woman. And she had a memorial stone she could share with the other ladies of the church. Now, now the thing that we are missing in the Christian life, we really are missing this, most Christians, I say most Christians, are not walking in victory. In fact, the truth be known, they're walking in defeat. Most Christians, as I was telling the new Christians class today, uh, are ashamed. It's like we're ashamed. Now, the world is bold. The world don't mind speaking out. They don't mind coming out of the closet, so to speak. They don't mind telling you what they think. But boy, you let a Christian stand up and begin to shout victory and begin to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're going to offend some folks. I, I'm, I'm, I, I know I've offended folks. The, the, by the way, the gospel is offensive. Did you know that? But now this book of Joshua is a neat book. It really is. And I want to teach you something real quickly because it's the book of victory. As the Old Testament book describes the New Testament victory that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. For you see, Joshua is a picture. He's a type. He's an illustration of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the name in the Old Testament, Joshua, is the Hebrew name of our New Testament name, Jesus. Interesting that Joshua represents and pictures the victory that Jesus can give us. The Lord Jesus is our heavenly Joshua who leads us into the land of promise, the land of fulfillment, the land of victory. So as we uncover this today, I, this is what I want you to get. I don't want you to sit there today and think, well, this is just a historical account. Many of you know what this is about, where Joshua was instructed to walk around the walls of Jericho. I don't want you to see this today only as a historical book. For the Bible says, Paul says it very clearly, and I really want to give you this verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Listen to this. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition. You see, what we have recorded here was given to us today for an example, and he says in 1 Corinthians 10, 11, for our admonition. All to make this our own. To take the example from Joshua and the saints of God from this age and it would bring amazing strength and help and benefit to our calling and our life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Joshua is set to look over the city of Jericho. Here's the background. He's sizing up Jericho. He, he's, he's been called of God to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. But he's got some major issues here. Because Jericho is some fortified city. I'm talking about a huge place. It was a great citadel fortress that stood before the children of Israel and the land of promise. It was a great city, great in antiquity, one of the most known inhabited cities on the face of the earth. But it was also known as a place of iniquity. I mean a wicked, godless, sinful city. It was great in its fortification. Great walls and chariots could uh, ride abreast. Side by side, you could ride two chariots just on the top of the walls of Jericho. That's how thick these walls were. It was in the eyes of man a military strategy that was impregnable. Uh, it was an impregnable fortress. It looked like no way that Israel 
could take Jericho. And I've said all that to say this today. I want to bring it home to you. What is your Jericho today? Because everybody's facing something today. We're living in a day where uh, there's a lot against us. I mean, really. And there's a lot going on. Someone was telling me today uh, they, they've had pay raises every year. But with the pay raises comes more taxes to be paid. And so they're paying out more in taxes. There's a lot of things that we're having to deal with. And I want to say to each of, in each of our lives, the devil has placed some very special Jericho in your life. And it looms before us as an impossible barrier that stands between us and the fulfillment that we feel that God wants for us in our life. There is a Jericho that stands between us uh, in the dreams of our youth. And, and it's a Jericho, listen to this, that stands before us as a child of God when, you know, the Bible makes it clear we're to walk in victory, right? We come to church and we sing, Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. And we go out the door with our heads down and defeated. It's like the devil has robbed us of our joy. Did you know the Bible says no man can take your joy from you, but you can give it to him? And you let some sister or some brother in church get happy a little bit and we all look down our pious nose because we think, well, what's she so happy about? I'm, I'm miserable and I want everybody else to be miserable. I'm angry at the world and I want everybody else to be angry with me. I mean, is that not true? Oftentimes in the church, we get discouraged, we get defeated, someone hurts our feelings, I'm not going back over there no more. Man, you just don't know how many times I have had to say, well, so-and-so used to go to our church. You know why that is? Because we're listening to the devil more than we're obeying God. You see, it's not, listen, it's not about us. It's not based on our feelings. It's based on our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, faith ought to be greater than our feelings. Oh, we get our feelings hurt. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times it's about our old flesh. Come on now, preacher. You know, one of these days I'm, on, I'm just going to get up here and I'm going to turn around and say, you preach it, Brother Ronnie. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's about the, it's all about our flesh. I mean, we, we, we are so in tune. This, this is the truth. We're so in tune with our flesh and our feelings and our emotions that we miss God. And I'm afraid today someone's going to miss God. What is your Jericho is my question. There is a Jericho that stands before us. And Jericho says to us, You would have made it if it weren't for me. For I am here in my strength to keep you from entering into the land of promise. You know what your Jericho is. Can I give you some suggestions? For some of you, it's an unhealthy body. For others, it's an unhappy marriage. For others, it may be an unholy life. For some, it, it may be old age. For some, a lack of education. For some, it may be uh, some defeat or some fear. There just seems to be something in our lives that's insurmountable, something that, that comes between us and God. We know our God is able. We know we serve a great big God. We know that we can walk into this promised land that God has promised us. But we take our eyes off of God and we put it on our circumstances. And instead of being victors, we're victims. That's where Christians are today. And God's been speaking to my heart strongly about this message. I don't know you folks yet, but are you walking in victory or are you walking around as a victim? Well, I'm just never going to be happy. It's just my lot in life not to be happy. I'm going to be like the rest of the Christians at Gord Springs. I'm going to go around with a frown on my face. Preacher didn't even shake my hand today. It's all about, you know, what we feel. It ought to be about our faith. And a living God who's able to do far beyond what any of us have even seen. We've yet to see what our mighty God can do. Right here at Gord Springs Baptist Church, and I'm sick of it, where most churches seem to think, well... God blesses such and such church over there, but he don't bless our church. wonder what's wrong with the church. You know what's wrong with the church today is that we are not believing God. We really aren't believing that God is who he says he is. I'm going to tell you what belief really is. Belief is faith in action. The Bible says uh, faith without works is what? Dead. That's why you got so many dead churches. 
Because we're not willing to step out and believe God and trust God, just like the children of Israel. What did they do but get a Baptist committee together and say, let's go in and spy out the, the land. They came back with a, what kind of report? A negative report. Boy, that's one thing about committees I don't like. They'll examine it and study it until they decide we're not going to do nothing. You know, I remember years ago, I was elected as chairman of the evangelism committee in our association. I was the chairman of the committee. I went to that committee meeting that night, and everything got done. I'm telling you what, everybody was in agreement. There was the sweetest spirit there, and we got the most done that night of any meeting I've ever been at. I was the only one that showed up. <laughs> That's the truth, too. We were all in agreement, and we got everything done. Sometimes it's best... And you know, just to go on and do what God's called you to do, you don't need to get somebody else's permission. If God told you to do, do it. Just do it. Amen? We need to be like that Nike commercial. Just do it. Sometimes we cannot overcome because we see ourselves as failures. We are defeated many times. Some fortress that seems to keep us from conquering the land that God has given us. And when you face your Jericho, you can do one of two things. Listen to this. You can turn around and go back and die in the wilderness of unbelief. Or you can do as Joshua did and face the fortress by faith and conquer it. Again, this is not just a historical account. I want to make that clear to you. This is for us today. I want you uh, to understand what the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 30. It says, it, it tells us how they won the victory. If you were to read that, Hebrews 10, uh, chapter 11, verse 30, says they won the victory at Jericho by faith. I'm preaching this today because I'm claiming for all of us that we're going to go into this new year by faith. You don't know what this new year holds, but I'm here to tell you God knows. God's got a plan. He's got a plan for you as an individual. He has a plan for this church. Now, I'm going to ask this church something today. Do you want to go back into the wilderness of unbelief? Are you ready to go forward? And here's my question I've been asking myself. Ronnie, don't just get up and tell them you're ready to go forward if you don't tell them how to go forward. So today I'm going to tell you how to go forward. Now here's the first thing I want to teach you. Uh, I said we're going to go deep. We're going to go deep today. This is, this is a deep truth. It's the whole book of Joshua. I've preached through this whole book. The whole book of Joshua in one sentence. You'd like me to get to the, the point. Well, here's the point of Joshua. Here is, his, here is the book of Joshua in one sentence. Victory is not achieved by fighting. It's received by faith. Victory is not received by fighting. You see, that's getting into the flesh. You see, Joshua was sizing up Jericho, and he was thinking, there's just no way. I mean, oh, oh, this, this bit, oh, look at those chariots riding abreast around the city. I mean, the more he looked at it, the bigger it got. I mean, he had to be thinking, in his flesh, do I storm the city with ladders? Do I build trenches uh, what do I do, oh God? I mean, you called me, I understand that, but this is too big for me. By the way, if something is too big for you, are y'all listening, say amen? amen. It's tailored made for God. Amen. I mean, what you think is so hard is pudding for God. I'm really, I mean, there's a lot of things that you're facing today. There are people here... What is your Jericho? You already know what it is. It may be an unhealthy body. It may be an unhappy marriage. It may be some fear or some defeat. And that's all you think about, that child that's gone uh, away. I, I dealt with a man this week, and, and I said, Brother, are you willing to leave it here at the altar and give it to God and turn it loose? That's the key right there. By faith, I'm going to trust that God is bigger than all my troubles. He's bigger than all my fears. He's greater than all the things that I'm standing against the triumph of faith you see when God has a gigantic task that he wants to perform what does he do but give faith the contract faith is wonderful because it's faith that ranks our nothingness are y'all listening to God's almightiness when I am weak he is strong when I am nothing he is the almighty God oh praise the Lord alright verse 13 is the first point the captain of our faith. 
the captain of our faith. Joshua is out looking at Jericho. He's summing up these problems. He's measuring the city. There it is. There's the great walls. It just can't be done is what he's thinking. Say, when's the last time you looked at your Jericho? Look up here. Some of you can say in the last five minutes. I mean, you've already thought about what is that trouble that's troubling you. And that's all you're focused on. You're more focused on the problem than you are the answer. Hello? I'm going to give you the answer today. It's going to be worth your time to be at church today. I wish everybody was here. Oh, we, we walk around our troubles and, 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 and it's, it, it's, even in the church it's as though we worship our troubles. We worship our problems. Because we've got our gaze on our problem and our glance on God. We've got to get our gaze on God and our glance on our troubles. You see, I can barely see that there's a piano over there because I'm looking this way. But my peripheral vision, I can see that there's a, this thing here, this, the Lord's Supper here. And I can see the, 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 the piano there. But that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking that way. And we need to turn our eyes on Jesus and look in his wonderful face. And what does that song say? The things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of what? His glory and grace. Now here's Joshua. He's sizing up Jericho. He's scratching his head. And all of a sudden, hmm, he felt something. Like the presence of another. You ever been around somewhere and felt like somebody was standing near you? Just, you could feel it. Well, Something strange happened. Joshua felt the presence of another and he turned around and there was a man, the Bible says, with a drawn sword. Oh, Joshua looked at this man and said, Sir, are you for us? Because Joshua's pulling out his sword. He's ready to fight. Are you for us or are you against us? And the man had his, his sword already drawn. You would think there's fixing to be a sword fight. And Joshua asked him, Sir, are you for us or are you for our adversaries? Say, fellow, whose side are you on? Now, I want you to notice that the strange answer that he gets. Joshua said, are you for them or for us? And the answer is no. I mean, what kind of answer is that? Look at verse 14. And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I have now come. What does that mean? He is saying, no, I'm not for you, and I'm not for them. I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take over. You see, who this captain of the faith is, the captain of the host of heaven, is none other but the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you say, well, preacher, I don't believe that Jesus could appear before he was even born in Bethlehem. Man, we're talking about God here. God and Jesus came before Joshua, a pre-incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other person. You study it. You look at it. Here's the Lord Jesus standing before Joshua, and Joshua's looking at the Lord Jesus. This was Jesus he met. And in the Old Testament, it was called a pre-incarnation of the Lord Jesus. He is the Lord Jesus, the captain of the host of heaven. And Joshua had a preview of the coming of Jesus. He saw the man, the conqueror, with the drawn sword. If you want victory in your life, stop trying to get God on your side, and you get on God's side. Some of you are trying to maneuver. You think you can manipulate. You think you can control God. You think you can control the Holy Spirit. God ain't going to work that way. God, friend, you don't need to be worried about getting God on your side. You get on His side. You just make sure that you're at the place you need to be with God. Number one, you make sure you're saved, that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, you recognize the fact that he's the Lord of all. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills, and he owns the hills too. A lot of people are having financial problems in this economy. And you know what? They think somehow that we can rob God and get by with it. You'll never rob God and get by with a thing, friend. Because 10% is God's money whether you and I like it or not. You say, well, you're just preaching that because you're one of those preachers that preaches on money. No, I preach on your heart. And if your heart's right with God, you'll give. That's right. Because you see, 90% of God-blessed money goes further than 100% of devil-infested money. And you see what we need to understand, that this is a walk of faith. You say, well, I don't understand how that works. God does. <laughs> and look up here. That's all that matters. That God understands it. 
Listen to this. God already had all this problem figured out with how to take Jericho. What he needed was Joshua to understand that Joshua, I don't want you to try to figure this problem out. I want you to faith it out. See, that's the problem with most men in this church. In your marriages, you want to fix what's broken. You're trying to, you're trying to figure your wife out. Look up here, man. You have never figured her out. <laughs> I asked our secretary in my other church, I said, I want to understand something. I want to understand women. Would you explain it to me? She said, I don't understand women either. <laughs> Let's try real hard this year to stop trying to figure it out and faith it out. We're trying to figure everything out, trying to fix it, and that's what the men of this church are notorious for doing. I know because I am one. Something broke, I want to fix it, right? That's the job of a man. I pulled out of the driveway today, and there was a sweet little family, and they were right there near the road, and I told Sherry, I said, you didn't see what that man did, did you? She said, no. I said, I saw it. He went out and stood immediately in front of his little girl with her little car, uh, play cart there she got for Christmas, a little motorcycle, whatever, so she wouldn't run out in the road. He was protecting his family. And by the way, it takes a real man to take a stand and say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It takes a real man to be the spiritual leader. I don't even know why I'm on this this morning. I'm going to tell you, Joshua was a real man. And here's what he did. This is what I want you to get. If you want victory in your life, stop trying to get God on your side and you get on God's side. Don't worry about God getting on your side. You just make sure you're on his side. God has not come to take sides. He's come to take over. And you'll never know faith. You'll never know victory. Your Jericho will never fall until you do what Joshua did. He laid his sword at the feet of Jesus. He bowed himself prostrate at the feet of Jesus. And he worshipped him. And when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, Jericho no longer, listen to this, no longer is your problem. It's God's problem. Amen. I'm telling you, when you let go and release it and say, God... I'm done with it. This problem I've been carrying, this burden I've been carrying, this trouble, this hardship, I'm going to release it. I'm going to lay myself at your feet and I'm going to worship you. you say, Preacher Ronnie, it can't be that simple. It is. When you take your hands off of it, God will put his hands on it. The problem is, most of us can't take our hands off of it. We'll come to the altar and give it to God and take it right back. We wonder, I, I was talking to a lady uh, last night, she said, I don't understand why it's so difficult. She said, I don't understand why uh, it's so difficult to live for Jesus. Why is it that I don't have victory in my life? Because we got our hands on it, and we need to take our hands off. Look up here, I'll teach you something. No one can live the Christian life. It's impossible. You can't do it, but Jesus can. Through you, the Christian life can be lived. It is supposed to be a life of victory. It's not supposed to be a life of defeat. The Bible tells us the devil is a defeated foe, and yet we look like the defeated foe. We've listened to the lies of the enemy so long that we begin to act like the devil in the church. Hello? Yeah. I mean, we act just like him sometimes. I mean, we look like him sometimes. I shall not be moved. I am a Baptist. I'm going to sit on the back pew and nobody but not sit there. That's my seat. I, I'm telling you, it's amazing how we are. We've listened to the lies of the enemy. Am I right? Oh, yeah, we've listened to him till we started believing that the devil's the one who's right and God is the one who's wrong. Folks, the devil is the one who's wrong and God is always right. He's never failed. The captain of our faith. Man, I want to preach so bad, I believe I'm going to go ahead and help myself. I'm going to just have a spell. Great day in the morning. I'm up here shaking. I... <laughs> no longer did Joshua see Jericho as the problem. All he could see was victory. Because here's the other thing I want to teach you. Here's the greatest. I told you I'm going to give you some deep stuff this year. This is really deep. Before, and you men especially need to hear this, but you women too. Before you can learn to be a leader in your home or in your church, and before you can be a conqueror, the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Here's one of the great truths I want to teach you this year. This happened with Joshua. Before God gave him Jericho, 
Joshua, the military leader that he was. He was the he was the commander in chief of Israel. He was, he was the head honcho. He was the man that God called to lead into the promised land. You remember the story of Moses and all. But here's Joshua called to go in Jericho. Now here's the deep truth I want you to get. Before you can be a conqueror, you must first be conquered. Before you can be a leader, before you can be a man of God, before you can do anything in the name of Jesus, you first must be conquered. That's what happened here. This is the truth of the triumph of our faith that Joshua had a head-on encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and Joshua, the conqueror, became conquered. And that's how he won the victory. He won the victory because he recognized who the conqueror really is. You see, here's, here's Joshua, the military leader, now recognizing who is the military leader. Who is the one who fights the battle? We don't fight with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And the Bible says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Before you can be a uh, conqueror, you must first be conquered. Has that happened to you? Have you bowed your head before the Lord Jesus and worshipped him? Have you given everything to Jesus? If you haven't, no wonder your Jericho is still there. You want to know why God hadn't healed that body yet? Could be because you've not let him heal you. Hello? I mean, really. Here's the number one reason we get sick. Stress. And we don't trust God. We don't. Because we're walking around with all this garbage and all this stress. And the devil loves that because he wants to kill us all off. But if we would allow the spirit of the living God to work in our life instead of being stressed out, we'll just be spirit-filled. Hello? And let God be God in our life. I'm here to tell you, I serve a God of victory. He is not a God of defeat. I don't care how big the Jericho is. I don't care how wide the walls are. I don't care how high the walls are. I don't care how big the giants are. I'm telling you something. None of this is bigger than our God. He's the almighty God. I want you to see the compliance of our faith. I'm going to move quicker now. Once Joshua met the captain of the host, he gave him some instructions that were rather unusual. Joshua complies with those instructions to the letters, to the very letter. And what in strange, strange, strange instructions they were. It doesn't sound like a military strategy to me. Uh, it doesn't, and he, he, notice what he does here. He, he doesn't tell Joshua to fix the problem. He doesn't give him any military weaponry. He doesn't, he, do, he, he, do, he puts nothing in Joshua's hands to fight Jericho, but he just gives them instructions. He says, I want you to walk around the city. You ever feel like you're walking in circles? Well, guess what? That's God's instructions. God instructed Joshua, you take the priests and you take the ark and you, the ark the covenant and you march around the city for six days. I want you to march once around the city. One time a day. Now can you imagine? I'm, I'm fixing to say something deep here. Can you imagine the jeers of Jericho? The people up on the wall. Hey, you dummy. You think you're going to overcome us by walking around our walls that are impregnable? Hey, cat got your tongue. Remember what the scripture says? Here's a good word for the church. Let me take my shoes off. I'm on holy ground now. Sometimes it's best just to keep your mouth shut. Sometimes we're too quick to speak. God said, shut your big mouth, church. That's what he told Israel, right? He said, Israel, shut your mouth. Don't say a word. I don't care what the world says to you. I don't care what the devil says to you. Don't, don't, don't you listen to the lies of Jericho. They can holler at you. They can jeer at you. They can make fun of you. They can call you all the names in the book. But just know that I'm God and I get to have the last word. Bless God, I read the back of the book and we win. Folks, I'm telling you something. I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. And all that we need to learn to do is trust God to do it. I mean, just believe God. Joshua believed God. He started marching around Jericho. But on the seventh day, there were some different instructions. You remember what that was? To walk seven times. Woo, I'm going somewhere. I'm not going to look at my watch. It ain't going to help me anyhow. But they started marching around the wall. I'm telling you something. 
Two things real quickly that I think I'm only getting to watch. All right. <laughs> two things. Two things quickly. Obedience. I think that's what uh, God was after. Did you know obedience is more important than sacrifice? God wanted to test the obedience of, uh, of Joshua and Israel just to see if they would obey him. You see, now get this. You see, it's not our job to understand. It's our job to undertake. Some of you may not like this, so listen very carefully so you won't go out of here and misunderstand me. This book is not foremost a book to be understood. It is a book to be obeyed. Now, I'm fixing to teach you something else deep today. This is deep. If you'll learn to obey it, God will open your eyes that you can understand it. He's not going to open the, the covers of this book for you to understand it unless you're willing to obey it. And when you obey it, whoo, hold on, Gord Springs. I'm not going deep. When Gord Springs Baptist Church, Ronnie Stewart, and the people of this church begin to obey God, look out, devil, here we come. We're going to walk all over you, you lying, no good for nothing, two-faced hypocrite. We're going to be the people of God. And it's time that the people of God be the people of God again. We've listened to the lies of the devil. We've allowed the walls of Jericho to overcome us. But Jesus overcomes Jericho. I love the story. Oh, what an account here that Joshua understands that Jesus is the captain of our faith. And now we see the compliance of our faith. God, I, I love this statement by E.M. Uh, e. Thomas. Here's what he said. He said this. He said, God, I can't. You never said I could. You can. You always said you would. What a great statement that is. God, I can't. You said, you never said I could. You can. You always said you would. Not only was there obedience going on here, but there was observation here. You see, the more they walked around the city, the, the, hey, do you understand this? They were thinking, this really is a big city. <laughs> I mean, they kept walking around it and they got to thinking, God, if you don't come through, we're all sunk. Look up here, church. If God don't come through, you're sunk. For some of you, if God don't heal you, you're sunk. If God don't save your marriage, you're sunk. If God don't save your family, you're sunk. Look up here. The smartest thing you do is become totally dependent on God. I love that old song, Woody. Have faith in God. He's on his throne. Have faith in God. He watches over his own. He cannot fail. He must prevail. How faith in God. God cannot fail. Say it with me. God cannot fail. Bless God, we need to start saying some things that are true because the de we listen to the lies of the devil. We watch so much television. By the way, you need to get your eyes off the TV and get it on Jesus. Amen. I mean, you know, they shouted the victory. STV, they shouted the victory. If you quit watching the lies of the devil on television and start shouting the victory, you'll see God work in your life. I got to close this thing up because there's something good I, I got to give you before you leave here. The continuance of faith. You see that in verses 13 through 15. What a test of faith it was. I mean, uh, to, to them it looked like they were just going around in circles. They weren't going anywhere fast. But let me tell you this real quick about God's timing. Wasted time is never, uh, I mean, waiting time is never wasted time. When you wait upon the Lord, those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. You will never mess up. You will never mess up waiting on God. You say, Preacher Ronnie, I don't like waiting on God. Let me take my shoes off again. Bless God, this is good. Let me tell you something. God has never showed up late. Not one time. Never one time. When you wait on the Lord, I want you to recognize something. He always shows up right on time because he's never late. God's never been late. I know some of you are thinking, God, if you don't heal me quick, if you don't do this, you know what? We're in this right now mentality. We want it done yesterday. Am I right? That's the way everybody thinks. But friend, waiting on God. I heard about this man who prayed, Lord, give me patience, but do it now. That's where we are. We want it now. 
You can't get it fast enough. The Bible says in Isaiah 28, 16, He that believeth shall not make haste. Isaiah 30, 18, And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious to you. Mary said, Lord, if you'd have been here on time, Lazarus would have been healed. God had something better than just healing him. God wanted to resurrect him from the dead. Amen? God don't mess up, folks. He's never failed. He's never had to say, I don't know, because he knows all things. I just think you and I need to wake up and realize the devil's a liar and God is truth. And we need to listen to the truth today. That's the continuance of faith. Waiting time is never wasted time. And I'm skipping over here, but I want you to get this. You know the problem with many people today? When they're sizing up their Jericho, they're so negative in their personality and their attitude and everything, all they can think about is problem this and problem that. And you see it in church everywhere. People are always so problem conscious. You see what happened to Joshua? He was that way. Joshua was so problem conscious. He was standing there sizing up Jericho. But the, the, the captain of faith showed up and the conqueror became conquered. And guess what? No longer was there any question in Joshua's heart that Jericho was going to be Israel's because he knew that God had showed up. And no longer was he problem conscious. He was God conscious. I wonder, and I know I'm over time, but listen to this. I wonder if we could become so God conscious that we wouldn't be worried about nothing else. Some of us are so worried about what's going to happen five minutes from now. We're so worried about getting out of church that we never get into church. Amen? I mean, we're so focused on our problems, we walk right by the one who can solve all of our problems. Some of you today are going to walk out those doors. You're going to walk right by the one who can solve all your problems. You are. Some of you today, you're so much in your sin. It's like a lady told me last night. I had the joy of leading this lady to the Lord in the hospital. Talking about a God moment. Sharon, I was walking in the hospital. And this man said, Happy New Year. I said, Who are you? And he told me. He said, My wife's laying up there real sick. I said, Would you like me to go pray for her? He said, I would, preacher. Would you? He, I told him who I was. I was new pastor at Gord Springs Baptist Church. I went up there and met this dear lady and led her to Jesus. But you know what she said to me? She said, Preacher, I'm so unworthy. Isn't that what she said? I'm so unworthy. You see, the devil has lied to people. God loved that dear lady. She was laying there sick, and, 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 and she said, I'm so unworthy to be saved. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. The one who is worthy saved her. And I'm telling you, they're going to get in this church. She said, I want, to, I want to come to Gord Springs. She said, I understand you can go over there and people accept you for as, but the way you are. I said, come on, honey, you're welcome. I'm telling you something. It's important that we as a church become so God conscious. And listen, this is good now. That we would become so God conscious that we wouldn't even think about our problems. And God take care of the problems. I had a deacon's meeting years ago and one of the elder deacons said, we always pray at the end of the deacon's meeting. He said, we've got a lot of problems to solve in this church tonight. Why don't we start praying? We, we did. We started praying. And we prayed, no, no kidding now, about an hour and a half. We got through praying and we all, this is the truth, we all looked at each other and said, problem solved, and went home. <laughs> that really did happen. If we would become so God conscious, God will take care of the problem. We're so problem conscious. Listen to this. God can't take care of it. Because we're so focused on the problem. We're looking at our Jericho that we're not looking to Jesus. I'm almost done. The confession of faith is really where I want to get. Is that where I'm at? Faith is you confessing. Now some of you are going to think right now, bless God, I'll take my towel. Look up here. The devil don't like what I'm fixing to do. So just hold on. He don't like that I'm going over, but I, I got to give you this. Because folks, I'm going to tell you something. The key, the key, to overcoming your problem in your Jericho is your confession of faith. You made a confession of faith when you received the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And you even publicly acknowledged it. You joined this church. You were publicly baptized in that baptistry. And then it's like we become ashamed. Now I'm going to say something, and it, you know, I ain't been here long, and uh, I might get kicked out as of the day. That's all right. I'll be kicked out for proclaiming the gospel. I'm going to confess it that in the Baptist church today, we need to learn to shout. Amen. We do. 
You know what? The victory was won when they shouted the victory. Oh yeah, and did you know the Bible says, the Bible says when Jesus comes back to this earth, He's coming with a shout. Oh yeah, you see, and by the way, a trumpet will sound. Oh, I'm going to read it to you, don't worry. i got the scripture here. Oh, I come prepared. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. The confession of faith. Faith is your confession of what God has already said. Someone needs to stand and shout, I'm healed. There was a man that I loved dearly. I, 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 I cried uncontrollably because I loved him so dearly. This was 23 years ago when the doctor said, you're going to die of cancer. It's all over your body. And this dear man, who still calls me about every day to encourage me, he said, I will die one day, but it won't be of cancer. He confessed with his mouth, God's healing. His name is Addison Moore Jr. He's still living today, and he has no cancer in his body whatsoever. You say, preacher, I don't believe in that kind of faith. That's why you're not healed. Because this man said this, I will die one day, but it won't be of cancer. Because he said, God healed me of cancer. When you hear, whoa, glory, I felt it. Here's the victory right here. Say it before it happens. I mean, that's true faith, isn't it? I mean, go ahead and make a confession of faith and say, I'm healed. I'm healed. And shout it from the mountaintop. Hey, you got a lost family member. You've got a wayward daughter. You've got a wayward son. They're coming home. They're coming home. Woo! What would happen at Gorge Springs Baptist Church if everybody began to shout the victory? I mean, that's what happened at Jericho. They shouted the victory. They followed the God's instructions. Oh, they looked foolish in the eyes of Jericho. It looks foolish in the eyes of the world. Some of you have got financial problems. You know, I've been a pastor since I was 19 years old. I'm 56 years old, and I've never seen anybody shout when we take up an offering. Wouldn't it be something if we started shouting, I'm financially free? Amen? Wouldn't it be wonderful? I'm not getting a lot of amens. But, but, <laughs> but if we would start shouting, God owns the cattle of a thousand hills and he owns the hills. He owns me. And by the way, that is the truth. You came into this world with nothing. You leave him with nothing. And it's all God's anyhow. Amen. It's only how you deal with it, how you're a steward of it is what counts. I'm telling you something. Make a confession. Faith is you confessing what God has already said. And God's already said it. Joshua's looking at these, uh, looking at chapter 6. Here's, I'm summing it up now. Hear God. He said, believe God and obey God. Folks, it's time for the Christian in this generation to step out and begin to, 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 to praise God, to, to thank God for what he's going to do. True faith says, I believe it's as good as done. And that's what Joshua felt. And that's the way he led the people of Israel. That's the way I want to lead you into 2014. I want to lead you to say it's as good as done. They're coming in. That lost person's coming in. How are we going to reach this county? I'll tell you how we're going to reach it. Here's the conquest of faith. The last thing is in verse 20 of chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 20. He says this, So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down so, the people, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. And they took the city. If you're going to go from victory to victory, you've got to learn to shout the victory. You really do. I mean, it's easy to gossip. It's harder to unashamedly proclaim the gospel. It takes a real church. Look up here. It takes a real church to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. It takes a bunch of wimps and hypocrites to gossip. Am I telling it like it is? Anybody can run their big mouth about someone else. Do you know people are, are committing murder in church? Yeah, because they gossip about each other. By the way, maybe no one's taught you this, but somebody needs to teach every church this. You, give, you will give an account for every idle word you speak. I told Woody the other day, I said, Woody, you don't have much to say. I thought, he's a wise man. <laughs> really. It's better to not say anything. It is. 
Don't say nothing against anybody because the Bible says with the same judgment you judge, you will be judged. And if you read Romans, I believe it's chapter 2, verse 1 or 2 right there, he says, and the only reason you do it is because you're guilty of the same. Whoo! I don't know where that came from, but I just said, all right, your Jericho will fall when you do what Joshua did. When he was willing to relinquish being the captain and he recognized who was the captain of their faith and the compliance of his faith, he followed God's instructions out of obedience and observation. Joshua was walking around no longer focused on the problem, but the one who solves the problem. The continuance of our faith. Don't you ever give up. Don't you ever quit. Don't you ever stop. Make the confession of your faith and the conquest of faith. Soon and very soon, I've got to say this and I'm done, there's going to be another trumpet sounding. Here's that verse I was going to read. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we will ever be with the Lord. I want to ask you something. Have you bowed your head before the one with the drawn, storm, drawn sword? Have you taken your shoe off? Have you laid down your sword? Will you lay down your problem? Church, I'm giving the invitation now. Would you lay it down at the feet of Jesus today? And would you begin to shout, the victory is mine. Some will do that. And maybe there's someone in this church is bold enough to literally shout before the Lord without being worried. Well, I wonder what others will think. Well, Jericho thought it was foolish. But Jericho was the ones overtaken. And the walls fell, the Bible says, flat. And God's people came in and took the city. We can take America back. We can. This crowd right here could take America back. I'm going to tell you the answer is not over in Fort Bragg. It's really not. There's some good people over there. And thank God for those who represent our nation. And, and I, I'm for them and support them 100%. But I'm going to tell you, it's God's people. The salt and light. We can win this world of Jesus by following the captain of our salvation. Let's bow our head. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. I've tried to give you my heart today, the triumph of our faith. Now, it's up to you, the Bible says. You see, faith without works is dead. What are you going to do about this message today? Will you shout? Will you shout the triumph of your faith today? Don't worry about your feelings. Don't worry about your fears. You put your faith in God and your fears will disappear. Father, I don't know any heart here today, but I know one, and that's mine. And I want to be a man who leads this church by faith. I don't know what 2014 holds, but I know that you're the captain of our faith. I know, God, you've never failed. I know, God, every, every circumstance, everything we find ourselves victims of, we can know the victory. Because we're willing to lay at the feet of Jesus. God, I pray today that there would be many people to come and lay their problem at the feet of Jesus. They'd lay their sickness at the feet of Jesus. They would lay their soul at the feet of Jesus. And you'll save souls and you'll heal bodies and you'll change lives and you'll lift burdens. All because by faith we come today believing God. Lord, I'm believing you now. This is not my invitation, it's yours. There's someone who don't know you, pardon forgiveness of sin. I pray the Holy Spirit would do His office work here today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As our musicians come, we're going to sing today, Lord, I'm coming home, 309. And you think about that today. It's time that God's people wake up. It really is. The devil's been lying to us for too long. He's lying to someone here today. You can't get saved, he's saying. That's a lie. You can be saved. Today is the day of salvation. I wonder. I know we went over today. But I'd rather go over today than see you go under for eternity. Amen? Trust Jesus. I'm more concerned about your soul than I am my belly right now. I am. I'm more concerned that you would step out of here and walk right past the Lord Jesus Christ. He's here today. I stood in this pulpit and felt his presence. Will you trust him today? Faith. Faith. Faith says, God 
will never fail. He will prevail. Let's all stand. You come as we sing. I don't know what you think about the time or where we are right now, but I'm going to tell you we're in a critical time in our country. We're at a critical time right now in our lives as we start this new year. Look up here, folks. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't keep you here and preach this truth to you. But with all my heart, I wonder if we could shout the victory today. I mean, Satan has done everything he can to keep Jericho before us. There's a lot of walls built in people's lives. That's why marriages are falling apart. That's why children don't want to be in church. Young people don't want to be in church today because we built so many blooming walls. Am I right? We've got to let the walls come down. I don't know. These fellows are down here praying probably for someone's healing. I tell you, if someone got healed today, we just need to give God a shout. So let's all say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand. Give him a hand. You say, well, preacher, the healing hadn't happened yet. Oh, it'll happen when God's people begin to thank him for what's going to happen. Amen? I wonder if we can give God praise for what he's going to do in 2014. I wonder if we could give God praise. And you say, preacher, you really are crazy. But that's all right. A hundred souls for Jesus in 2004. Wonder if a hundred people. I'm burdened for Gord Springs Baptist Church. I started a new Sunday school class today and walked by three that are empty. God didn't bless you to have a classroom for it to be empty. You know what? My class was five in my class today. You know what we all made a commitment to do? So help me, this is the truth, to bring five next Sunday, right? We're going to double our class next Sunday. You can do the same. 
you'll not grow as a church if you don't do it through Sunday school. I'm telling you, you got to get them in that small group. Get in Sunday school. I'm telling you. And let's, let's see what God will do. I'm excited. Are you excited about 2014? Let's say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Let's say glory to God. Glory, glory to God. I, I'm going to get you to be a shouting church. Amen. Amen. Erica comes this morning. This is uh, Erica. All about.